Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to use the TI-89 calculator to solve equations just like we were doing in the last section except in this section they're going to be equations that involve trigonometric functions so sine, cosine, tangent, things like that. The good news is it's really not any different than what you've already been doing. Uh, you go over here into the algebra menu and the solve uh, function is going to be exactly what you're going to use so you're really going to use the same thing if you're solving regular old algebraic equations um, that you're going to use if you're solving trigonometric equations so let's say we wanted to solve the simple trig equation uh, sine of theta is equal to one so we want to find all angles where sine of theta is equal to one so sine of theta we put sine like this guy and we're going to use, we could use x if we wanted to. We could, in fact, we'll do that in the next example. But for, for now, since we're dealing with angles, let's go ahead and put theta in there. You can use anything for the independent variable that you're solving for. When we're dealing with angles, I, I like to use theta just to remind me that I'm dealing with angles. So sine of theta, close that off, equals uh, 1. And so those of you that have taken some trig know that this is a pretty simple equation. Basically, what we're asking the calculator to do is find all angles where the sine of that angle is equal to 1. So if you think about your unit circle here, um, the only place where an angle is going to give you the sine is going to be equal to 1 is going to be up here at the top of the y-axis, so pi over 2 uh, radians. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and all multiples of that angle as you go around the unit circle. So pi over 2 radians and you can go add 2 pi more radians and 2 pi more radians and keep coming back to this top of this y-axis right there. So we need to put a comma and tell it what variable we're solving for. So we'll go ahead and put theta back in here again and close it off. So we put the equation, it's a trigonometric equation, and we've got the variable. We go ahead and hit enter and it spits this complicated looking thing out. Uh, what we have here, it tells us theta is equal to 2 times this something or other n1 times pi plus uh, pi over 2. What you need to understand when you're dealing with this calculator is when anytime you have an equation that involves trig function there's a decent likelihood that the answer you're going to get is going to involve this ampersand n1 uh, and more complicated ones you might have ampersand n2, ampersand n3. Basically this is just you can just sort of erase the ampersand and the 1 and think of it as n. The answer to this equation is 2n pi plus pi over 2, and this is exactly what we just said verbally we should have, uh, where n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, because these trig functions, they're all going to have answers that are going to be, you know, a lot of times, you know, infinite number of answers, depending on how many times around the unit circle you want to go. So we said that, that the answer to this is going to be the upper side of the unit circle on here in the y-axis, but if we go 2 pi radians, then we're going to get back around to that same point, and that's also a solution. If we go another 2 pi radians, and another 2 pi radians, and another 2 pi radians, we're going to keep coming back to the same exact point as far as the angle. So what it's saying here is, the base answer when n is equal to zero all this stuff disappears and we have pi over two as our answer which is what we want but when n is equal to one then we add two pi radians to that when n is equal to two we add four pi radians to that and so on and so on so that we continue coming back around to the same point so if you see this ampersand n um, just think of it as the way you would write it down in your paper two n pi plus pi over two now the reason it's n one is because if you had a more complicated equation you might have an, uh, another constant n2 or another constant n3 and to keep them all separate for you they they put this ampersand n1 but that's just to keep it straight so that you don't get confused um, from one end to another if you have if you have a more complicated equation you might have more than one of these little constants most of the time you'll only have one so you'll always see ampersand n1 Okay, so that's a pretty good deal. You can go up here and play around with this. We can do something a little bit different just to get a feel for this. Let's put, uh, let's go ahead and backspace over this, and let's put cosine of uh, of theta. I'm going to take that one off. Cosine of theta is equal to what I want to put here for this example. Cosine of pi is equal to negative one. 
just another equation. Cosine of pi is equal to negative, uh, cosine of theta is equal to negative one. What angles along the unit circle are gonna give me a cosine of negative one? Well, if we're talking about cosine, we're talking about what lies along the x-axis. Negative one's gonna be over here on the left-hand side of the unit circle, so that's going to be pi radians. But it's not just pi radians, it's pi, and then you can go around two pi to give you another angle, and another two pi to give you another angle, and another two pi to give you another angle. So you're gonna have an infinite set of solutions, and the calculator tells us uh, that this is true. Now, don't be too worried about the way it, it puts it on the display here. It's just gonna display it a little bit differently than you might, than you might be ready to expect is if you dig around here and think about it, this is exactly what we said we should have. When, notice that this is N2 here because it's differentiating from N1 so that you can keep them straight on the screen. Now, if N is equal to zero, which is where you always start with these things, then what you're going to have here is two times zero is zero, and then you're gonna have negative one pi. So it's negative pi. Um, and that's another way of representing positive pi in the, in the uh, unit circle. You could have negative pi there. Now if we go to uh, n is equal to 1, then we're going to have 2 minus 1 gives us 1, and then you have 1 pi. So we started out at negative pi. We add 2 pi radians to it, basically, and we're going to get over to positive pi, and then you keep adding and adding and adding. And so the, the calculator gives you an answer here. Not exactly how you would write it down in your paper, but effectively gives you the same thing. All right, one more quick one. Let's do um, uh, tangent of, oh, let's say square root of 3 over 3. Let's do something a little bit different. Square root of 3 divided by 3. Something a little bit harder to visualize. But we're also solving for theta. We hit enter. Too many arguments. That's because when you get something like that, you've usually got a parenthesis there. That's because I edited the um, equation, so I had an extra parenthesis there. Tangent theta is equal to square root of 3 over 3, solving for theta. And so we get a nice new guy like this, and we see that we have ampersand n3 that's just telling us it's different from the n that it used in the previous answer so n pi plus pi over 6 so when n is equal to 0 we have pi over 6 is the answer and then when n is equal to 1 we're just we're just going uh, we're just going up there and we're adding um, we're adding pi radians as we go all the way around the unit circle and um, finding equivalent answers as we go around the unit circle like that Okay, so that's a good introduction to using the equation solver in the TI-89 to solve trig equations. You put them in like a regular equation, um, you know, and just to show you really quickly that you don't need to use theta here, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can change this to x, and then you would have to go over here and have to change this to x, if that's what you're more comfortable with, hit enter, and it'll put it all in terms of x. So the variable that you use really doesn't matter at all, I just like to use theta when I'm dealing with trig functions because it's easier for me and it, it just makes more sense the way I write it down. Now, there's one more thing that you can do here. Let's go back into solve. Let's solve a very simple system of equations that involve trigonometry. Now, the, the simplest system of equations I could think of was the following that I think everybody could follow. Sine of uh, theta, whoops, wrong thing sine of theta is equal to uh, square root of 2 over 2. Okay, this should be familiar to you for those of you studying trigonometry. At uh, pi over 4 radians or 45 degrees, uh, you'll get, uh, when you take the sine of that, you'll get square root of 2 over 2. Now we want to put another equation in there because we're going to do a system, so we go into the math menu, go to the test menu, and hit the AND button. This is exactly the same process we used a minute ago when we were dealing with algebraic equations. And let's put cosine of theta is equal to the same thing. Let's put square root of 2 divided by 2. And then we'll put a comma, and then we'll put theta, and then we'll close it off. So basically we put the sine of theta is square root of 2 over 2, and the cosine of theta is square root of 2 over 2. There's really only one base angle that's going to make that happen, and that's what I just told you, 45 degrees, which is pi over 4 radians. The sine of that angle is square root of 2 over 2, and the cosine is also square root of 2 over 2. So when we hit enter here, 
the calculator is going to tell us, sure enough, pi over 4 is this base angle, but we're, um, we're, we're going to be going around the unit circle forever and ever and ever, collecting an infinite number of solutions that satisfy it. When n is equal to 0, we're going to get our pi over 4. When n is equal to 1, we just add 2 pi radians to it. As we continue incrementing n, we add 2 pi radians, 4 pi radians, and so on. We're just continuing to go around the unit circle because it's the location on the unit circle at this 45 degree angle, this pi over 4 radian degree angle, that satisfies the equations. I can go around as many times as I need to get to the same point. I'm going to have an infinite number of solutions, and the calculator handles that well. So that's a simple system of equations, and you could continue putting you know, more complicated equations if you wanted to, and it'll do its best to, to find the answer for you. That's pretty, pretty very, very useful, um, a very, very useful um, uh, feature of the calculator to be able to solve equations like this. It's pretty rare in calculators to be able to have that kind of power, and not only that it can do it, but the fact that it can put it in terms of a multiple of 2 pi like this, that's really, really cool. So if you get stumped on an equation, you go and work it on your test, and uh, you need a quick way to check your work, the TI-89 has the tools for you to be able to do that.